दी डायमंड सूत्र बोधी सत्व एसेंस बुद्धिज्म इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट साइंटिफिक रिलीजन्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इट हैज ऑल द मैप्स दैट आर नीडेड फॉर द ग्रोथ ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस एंड बोधी सत्व इज वेरी एसेंशियल बिफोर वन बिकम्स अ बुद्ध one is bound to pass through this state of bodhi sattva however it looks like nonsense that is true because you have no experience of it but you will have to understand the word nonsense in dictionary this word carries a different meaning a different connotation as rubbish or garbage or gibberish this is dictionary meaning however the meaning of the buddha differs he goes to the essence of the word now hyphenate the two words non and sin instead of using it as one word non hyphen sin the moment you hyphenate these two words non hyphen sin and the meaning changes in time also the dictionary cannot give any meaning to this hyphenated word it is beyond sin you need not believe it also you cannot believe it it is not a matter of belief or more it is not a matter of belief any more it is a matter of experience now it is a nonsense experience that it is true it is absolutely true it happens till it happens there is no way to believe it and there is no need to buddha is never in favor of any kind of belief whatsoever he says it is an experience remember all experiences are essential it is something beyond the mind when something is beyond the mind it cannot be grasped by the vagaries of the mind by the finiteness of the mind ordinarily we use the word nonsense for that which is below mind but there is something beyond mind too that you have never experienced indeed that too is nonsense mind cannot make any sense of it as you are thinking as you find there is no sense in anything hence it is termed as nonsense however nonsense is used in both senses when the matter is below mind as you understand as well as when the matter is beyond mind which is the understanding of people. in both cases it is outside the understanding of the mind either below or above hence the word is used but buddha uses it as hyphenated unless your mind disappears you will not be able to see this bodhi being unless your mind disappears mind means duality you have known good and bad right and wrong all the pairs of opposites we have known but the real mind the new mind exists beyond the pair of opposites you will not be able to see what is both the essence of it is not a thing true it is an experience and mind cannot capture the process that experiencing brings certainly mind cannot grasp 
the process that experience in you. You know desire, you know passion, you know sex, and you know love. Try to explain to a child in whom sexual desire has not yet taken form, and he will say it is all nonsense as you are saying. Will you not say that it is nonsense? Just try to explain the thrills of married life to a four-year-old child, or explain to him that you have fallen in love. And he will look at you with unbelieving eyes. What are you talking about? What is this stuff called love? You know? Will it not be the not be like nonsense to him? Do you get my point? And this is the reason, again and again, you get angry because you cannot understand. In order to understand something, you have to attain the state of maturity to understand that. All your romance and all your poetry and all your and all that are throbbing in your heart it is impossible to relate to a child. All that romance, all that poetry, and all that is throbbing in your heart. It is impossible to relate to a child. He has not tasted that which is. He is unaware of it. The desire has not arisen in him. Buddha calls that desire vasana. That vasana has not arisen in him, and unless it arises, there is no way to communicate anything. And this is what I am trying. To in myriad ways to create that essence, that insatiable quest in you, so that one day you will ask him. The same vasana, the same energy that is involved in desire, in sex, in love, one day is freed of desire. One day desire drops. Just as one day it arises, one day it drops. Anything that is born will die. Anything that begins will end. And if life goes very naturally and spontaneously, then there is a certain speed which can be demanded. Sex arises at the age of fourteen with sexual maturity, and the child is filled with something unknown and new. The child has got the wind of desire, and a great passion and fire is arising in him. Now, never again will he be that innocent as he was before the desire arose in him. He will never look at the things with that innocence again. If life moves spontaneously, naturally, then exactly fourteen years before your death, then exactly fourteen years before your death, the desire will be satisfied. Instead, exactly fourteen years before you. Die. Sex will become irrelevant. Suddenly, again, you will find that dream is no more there. The passion has subsided. The storm of passion has disappeared, and there is silence, utter silence. This is not the silence of a graveyard. Instead, this is the silence. Of a dancing Buddha, a silence of an ecstatic Rabia, a silence of an ecstatic Mira dancing dance. Mira is dancing with his dancing bells on, 
but simultaneously a silence overflows and fills the atmosphere. But your energy has involved in the desire. The desire has disappeared now, and where will the energy be gone? You are still creating energy by food, by breathing, by exercise, and by living. You go on transforming divine energy into human energy. Where will this energy be? The old path is no more available. It cannot move into the direction of sexuality, the downward movement. Where will it move? Buddha has another word for it. He calls it Karuna. Karuna is a beautiful feminine name. Karuna means compassion. The overflowing energy now becomes Karuna or compassion. Passion is no more significant in your life. And until you reach to that state, there will be remain a turbulent. Turbulent in your understanding, turbulent in your ways and means. One moment you are leaning to this side, next moment you are leaning to its opposite. Energy is available. There is great upsurge of energy now available. It needs somewhere to move. I need to allow it to move somewhere. Because energy cannot remain static. Its very nature is to be dynamic. It starts overflowing from you and becomes compassion. And that state, when the energy flows to you as compassion, that is the state of Bodhisattva, the essence of Bodhisattva. And this essence of Bodhisattva is the secret of the diamond sutra, where your finiteness of the mind is all. It is pierced through a thunderbolt of understanding. When sex disappears, desire disappears, and with this future disappears as well. When you are suddenly here now and you have that great energy flowing in you, you cannot contain it. Really, you cannot contain it. It starts overflowing. It is compassion. This is the state of Buddhism. It is not a thing and it does not happen ordinarily. Because people have become very unnatural. That is why in all the languages of the world, when an old man is interested in sex, it is thought to be something dirty. The dirty old man. Why dirty? The young man is not thought to be dirty, but why the old man? The phrase has come down the ages from the ancient past when used not to happen. It was an ill state of affairs. It was not normal. Instead it was abnormal. Instead something has gone wrong. Otherwise before your death the desire has to be happened. Otherwise what have you been doing in life if you have not even come to the point where desire is happening, you have missed the opportunity given by life to be in And remember, I am not against desire. I am all for it. When it is time, go into it and go into it totally. That when the time comes to get out of it, you can get out of it totally, as well, with no trace whatsoever left in you. No trace whatsoever left in you. People forced to come out of the desire. However, deep down it assumes different dimension. Only one who goes totally in it will be capable of coming out of it 
thought of me, one day. Those who go leave to me, half-heartedly, partially, and in a witless way, will never be able to get out of the entanglement and will never be able to see the stupidity of it. They will really never be able to see the illusions, the illusory. So I am not against desire. No way. I am totally for us. Go into it and go totally and wholeheartedly when it is time. Only when it is time. While it is time, see whatsoever is possible to see. That very seeing will make you free of it. And then one day the truth is so bad that it will fall automatically. You have seen when the truth is right on the tree, it cannot be. Remember when the truth is right, falls down. The tree is unburdened. In that unburdening, what will you do? The energy will still be there. Earlier it was involved in so many things. Now it is not involved at all. Remember, you will become a reservoir of energy. This energy will start overflowing you for no reason at all. Buddha said, it is this energy that becomes compassion of karma. A bodhisattva is one who has so much of this compassion overflowing that he needs to give it. He needs to share. He is the one who has so much that when you accept his love, his being, his enlightenment, you obey it. He is like a flower full of fragrance and now the fragrance wants to be free to the wind or he is like a cloud full of rain water and he is searching a thirsty earth which can help him and accept. So it is a bodhisattva, so is a bodhisattva, a cloud full of rain water moving everywhere in search of a thirsty soul, in search of somebody who will welcome. The Bodhisattva is obliged to you when you accept his gift. He is like a flower who is walking, who is carrying the essence of it for you to absorb the greatness and the beauty of the flower. Bodhisattva is a state of such a consciousness it is nonsense, but true. It is not a thing, true. It still it happens. It is illogical. It surpasses our, all your logical sense. So it looks absurd. It does not relate to your experience yet. Certainly it does not relate to your experience yet. That's why you go on saying so many things. But soon, many of you are going to enter that realm. Many of you are just standing on the threshold. You cannot see. I can see that you are on the threshold, getting ready to take the ultimate jump. When it has happened, then we will know the truth is broken. The Diamond Sutra is not preached to laymen. It is preached only to the seekers who have attained a deeper spirit. Only to those who are coming to Bodhisattva or those who have come or those who are on the borderline. In fact, it has to be preached before one is coming to Bodhisattva. Because in that moment of Bodhisattva, if you do not know anything about it, what would you be doing? If you are not aware that there is a way to unburden and you can release your blissfulness, 
so there is no need to complain. If you know nothing about it, it will be difficult for you, indeed very difficult. Your very bliss, your very blissfulness will become a pain in the chest. It will become an ache in the heart. Rather than becoming a dance and a song, it will become pain. Do you know when bliss becomes very intense? It becomes painful. When light is too intense, it is dazzling. And you almost go blind. When love is too much, you cannot bear it. When joy is too much, your heart can stop. It too can be painful. Heart has a capacity to absorb a certain degree of loving unless the capacity of absorbing love changes. When Bodhisattva what happens, the joy is such and so is the magnitude of it, the blissfulness is such, the intensity of it that you can die just out of it or you can do more. Buddhism is the only tradition in the world where, where bodhisattvas have not been known to go mad. In Sufism they go mad, in Hinduism they go mad, and many of them go mad indeed. Sufis have a special name for them called Mazuz. But there is nothing like that found in Buddha tradition. But why? Buddha is so aware of all the possibilities and in preparing the path so scientifically that he goes on giving you indications, directions and suggestions for those moments which are going to happen to you again and again. I go on giving things in myriad ways. In myriad ways, what is going to happen to you now? What is happening to you at this very moment? And what is going to happen tomorrow? Down the ages, in these 25 centuries, never a Buddhist saint has been known to have gone mad to this world. In Sufism, when intense energy comes into you, we attain the state of mercy and one cannot get benefited from that state. In Hinduism too, many go mad. The reason is that Sufis and Hindus have nothing compared to Bodhisattva and no instruction is given. And in the West, problem is even more complicated. Christianity has no idea about it. So in Christianity, it has happened that ordinary people who were not in any way saints have been worshipped as saints. And those who were saints have been declared mad or possessed by them. In many Western asylums, there are people who are not really mad, but because of Bodhisattva, they don't know. They do not need psychiatric treatment or electric shock or tranquilizer or unnecessary torture or psychoanalysis. All that they need is a compassionate Buddha. A compassionate, a Buddha that is overflowing in love. Love and understanding go together. Without love, understanding is meaningless. And without understanding, love has no value. Remember, love is the essence of understanding. And an understanding is the fragrance of love. The all that they need, all that you need is a compassionate Buddha. The presence of Buddha 
that is all that is in you. Just the presence of goodness will bring them back, will become a great tree, a magnetic force, and will bring back to their consciousness, to their essence, to their very essence of the being. But they are being tortured. They are being pulled through unnecessary things. Because once you think they are mad, you start treating them as mad in This is what it is happening. You are lucky that you have an awakening, an awakening in the current and that keeps on showering this moment to moment. Whether you accept it or not, when the rain cloud showers itself, you must be aware, you must be aware.